with a Muslim population of somewhere around 4 million people, Germany has begun to recognise that alienating this significant minority is not conducive to fostering understanding and a mutual German identity. With this in mind, the state of Hesse in central Germany is offering Islamic education for students from Muslim families in their elementary schools. Speaking to the New York Times, one of Germany's education ministers, Nicola Beer, said, I think it's clear that for years we have made the mistake of alienating people. German schools already offer similar classes in Protestant and Catholic teachings with state-approved curriculums. The attitude of exclusion many Muslims claim to feel has fostered radicalization. A cell of Arab Muslims was implicated in planning 9-11 attacks and another group, the Sauerland cell, was involved in 2012 Bonn railway station bombing. While some governments around the world are trying to restrict public servants' dress code by forbidding the use of religious symbols, the US military is headed in the opposite direction. Lieutenant Commander Nate Christensen, US Department of Defense spokesperson, announced that the country's soldiers may be allowed to wear items such as a headscarf or a turban or groom themselves in certain ways as long as it does not interfere with their occupation. These new rules would prohibit any discrimination against people intent on expressing their sincerely held beliefs. This expression can include wearing long beards, have a crucifix tattooed on their body, wearing a yarmulke, or even request times off for prayer and holy days. In its current form, the rules state that authorization has to be requested individually and is not granted in case of adverse effect on military readiness, mission accomplishment, unit cohesion and good order and discipline. While these accommodations should be welcomed by most religious minorities, a spokesperson of the Sikh coalition, Rajdeep Singh, claims that they are falling short of expectations. He would like to see a guarantee that these authorizations would always be granted and not be revocable. The infidel will like to remind members of the US military that pastafarians or members of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster can request to wear a strainer on their heads and that Mondays as well as Fridays are considered sacred days of rest. The infidel has covered on multiple occasions the story of the slaughter of Muslims by the Buddhist majority in Myanmar. Today we are sad to announce that this is an ongoing crisis and that at least 70 more Muslims were recently killed. This report originated with the human rights organization Fortify Rights and has been repeated by the United Nations. It's an undisputed, it's an undisputed fact that the, that the approximately one million Rohingya Muslim minority living in Myanmar has been oppressed for ages by the 60 million Buddhist majority. But since 50 years of military government ended in 2011, the violence has, has significantly increased. A wave of slaughters was reported in June 2012. In 2013, more reports were echoed by the infidel, including the, burn of a, the burning of a mosque and another slaughter involving local police forces. This time, the local police, supported by an angry mob of Buddhists armed with knives, clubs and machetes, carried out their own justice. One source reported, this latest attack was supposedly started by the killing of a police officer and ended up with the hunting down of, Muslim, of the Muslim suspects and the slaughter of 70 people. There have also been reports of arbitrary detentions. Local state-run newspapers are only telling one side of the story. Meanwhile, government officials are categorically denying this latest event ever happened. They complain that this was false news and that spreading this information could only worsen sectarian relations. Finding accurate information is complicated by the fact that journalists are forbidden in the region, which is why the, why the UN is asking for an independent investigation and guarantees from the government that human rights will be respected. 